Okay guys, I hope your New Year's resolution is to shoot more astrophotography because 2020 has got plenty to look forward to. But let's start with January. We start the year with one of the better meteor showers, the Quadrantids. Something strange has happened to Orion. We also have a penumbral lunar eclipse. Venus is blazingly bright and Mars approaches its rival. But before we deep dive into all of that and more, a quick message from the sponsors of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. There are thousands of inspiring classes covering a huge range of creative topics such as graphic design, photography, videography, freelancing and more. I'm sure many of you watching this video will appreciate Ian Norman's class on nightscapes, an incredible introduction to all things landscape astrophotography. Or how about James Manning's Astronomy for Starscapes, which will help you make sense of the night sky and plan your astro photographs with ease. I've been using Skillshare for just over here now and I've used it for all sorts of stuff. There are lots of good classes on freelancing and running a business and also Adobe Premiere classes that help me edit these videos. Premium members get access to all of those courses and you can try as many as you like and if you want to join along just follow the link in the video description and you get two months completely free of Skillshare Premium. Okay guys, so something quite interesting has happened to the constellation Orion and it's to do with the star Betelgeuse, which others like to call Betelgeuse, but it has fainted and I don't mean to say that it's passed out from celebrating the new year, it's dimmed significantly. Now Betelgeuse was about the ninth brightest star in the entire sky, but it's now dropped by about a magnitude of one, which puts it at about 20th brightest in the night sky. So it's quite a significant drop. I've yet to see it myself because the weather here in Wales has been absolutely terrible. Uh, but this image from Steve Brown, an astronomer I follow over on Twitter, you can clearly see that it's just, just not as big and as brilliant as we're used to it being and Orion just doesn't quite look the same. Now Betelgeuse is a variable star meaning it dims and rebrightens periodically which is quite normal behavior for a red supergiant coming to the end of its life. However it's at its faintest since astronomers started recording its brightness which was about 50 or 60 years ago. This has led to a lot of speculation that Betelgeuse is going to go supernova and basically when a star goes supernova it runs out of fuel, sort of collapses under the pressure of itself and then explodes in emphatic fashion. And if Betelgeuse does explode, which it inevitably will, it will shine as bright as a full moon which means you'd see it in the sky during the daytime and it would be like this for a number of months as well so it would be quite an event and although Betelgeuse is approaching the end of its life that's astronomically speaking astronomers still think there's at least a hundred thousand years before we have a chance of seeing Betelgeuse go supernova so it's kind of like buying a lottery ticket you know the chances are very slim but you still kind of plan what you do with the money anyway it would be cool but it's probably not going to happen in our lifetimes. Now the Orion complex is a great area of the night sky if you're looking to get your star trackers out this month. There are plenty of targets. There is of course the Orion Nebula and the Running Man Nebula in Orion's sword. Next to the star Alnitak in Orion's belt you can find the smaller targets, the Horsehead Nebula and the Flame Nebula. Next to Rigel, Orion's foot is the large but faint Witch Head Nebula and a wide angle view of the constellation as a whole can look especially great with astro modified cameras as there's a great deal of hydrogen alpha emissions, particularly in Barnard's Loop and Lambda Orionis, which is Orion's head. Anyway, 2020 begins with one of the better meteor shows of the year, the Quadrantes, and because its radiant point is pretty close to the North Celestial Pole, this is very much a Northern Hemisphere affair. It's not very good when viewed from the Southern Hemisphere, to be honest. It's active for about two weeks, but it has a very sharp peak, which doesn't last very long. It only lasts a few hours, so you kind of have to be a bit lucky to be on the night side of Earth whilst the meteor shower peaks. Predictions this year put the peak around 8 a.m. universal time, so that's not the local time in your area. Universal time right now is the same as the time in London, Greenwich Mean Time, so you're going to have to work out what 8 a.m. universal time means for your local area. So the odds are looking pretty favourable for Europe and the Americas because there is a gibbous moon which will set at around midnight and the Quadrantid is one of those meteor showers where the rates pick up as you approach the pre-dawn hours and the radiant point reaches higher in the sky. So the moon sets, it gets out of the way and then the pre-dawn hours, if they are timed with the peak of the meteor shower, you can expect anything from 50 to 100 meteors per hour but you've got to be lucky to be in the right place on earth. 
So definitely worth a gamble if you've got clear skies on the night of the third and the morning of the fourth, particularly the morning of the fourth, just get out and try your luck and hope that you catch it the same time as the peak. Now on the 10th, there's an interesting full moon because not only is it a super moon, but there's also a penumbral lunar eclipse which, if I'm honest, is not the most exciting of events. It only passes into the penumbral shadow of Earth. It doesn't pass into the darker umbra. So you won't get a very distinct sort of shadow on the moon. It just has a sort of subtle gradient shadow across the moon. So the, the, the full moon will be a little bit dimmer than normal, and you might notice a subtle gradient across the moon, but it's not the most exciting of, of photographic opportunities. However, being a supermoon, it's definitely worth getting out and shooting, especially as it rises and as it sets. But I'll put a link in the video description below to the timeanddate.com website, which will give you more information about that penumbral lunar eclipse for your location. As for the planets this month, I'm sure a lot of you have already called Venus blazing above the western horizon after sunset last month, and it continues much of the same this month, shining at magnitude minus four, and it now spends longer in the sky as the month goes by. At the end of the month, it sets about four hours after the sun, so it can even be caught during the nighttime darkness as well now. Venus sits alongside a crescent moon on the 28th, and also at the end of the month, Mercury will also be visible in the west, just to the lower right of Venus, shining at a magnitude of about minus one. In the eastern morning skies, Mars can be found rising at around 4.30 a.m., and that's shining at a magnitude of about plus 1.4. During the middle of the month, Mars Mars also passes above its rival Antares. Now, Mars is named for the god of war in Roman Mars, but in Greek Ares, and Antares translates to rival of Mars. It was likely named this way by the ancients because of its resemblance to Mars in both color and brightness, and there's a great opportunity to photograph them side by side during the middle of this month. And there's also a close approach with the crescent moon and Mars on the 20th and the 21st. Now a small reminder for those of you in the Northern Hemisphere, it's still very much Aurora Borealis season, but now as the nights are starting to get shorter, we have less and less time and opportunity to capture them, so make the most of it whilst you can. Lastly then, I made a video about this recently, but SpaceX are planning to launch 60 Starlink satellites every two weeks throughout 2020. Obviously I'm not gonna update you every month about this, uh, but interestingly, the next batch of 60, has one satellite that has a coating on there to try and reduce the reflectivity of the satellite. So I'll be keeping an eye on that and hopefully things go well and SpaceX continue to coat the rest of the satellites that they put up there. But I'll stick a link to that video above. There's been some awesome discussions in the comments below, people from sort of both sides and both opinions, but um, definitely worth watching if you haven't caught it yet because it's uh, quite an issue right now for the astronomy community. Now for the hashtag Wittens, every month I set a subject, you guys send me your images by uploading them to social media and using the hashtag Wittens. Last month, however, we had a bit of a special one where it was the best photo of 2019 challenge and there are three prizes to be won. There's a Benro L plate, a $50 Loom Cube store voucher, and also a print and 2020 night sky calendar from myself. So there were so many good entries and I'll be doing a few honorable mentions and shares over on my Instagram account, but ultimately I have to pick three people. So in third place was this image from Bradley Hamer, this gorgeous image of the Milky Way arching over a canvas tent in Cambodia. I didn't have a theme when I was going into picking the winners, but I kind of realized after picking the winners that they all kind of uh, put me in place, made me feel like I wanted to be there. Uh, and this image is a perfect example of that. I really want to go to Cambodia, spend the night in that campsite under the Milky Way. It just looks incredible. In second place was this Star Trail image from Jawad's Shooting Stars Gallery, and I just love the colors in the sky, but not only that, the detail and the attention paid to the foreground is insane. Like all of the little stones and details on the path, the light on inside the, the little stone house there with the balcony, you know, again, just another image that just makes me want to be there at that time. So 
Another great image. And in first place was this image from Adam Schnabelson. <laughs> I really don't know if that's how I pronounce your surname. I'm sorry if I've butchered it. But I just love this image. There's a lot of effort gone into getting up onto those snowy mountains. You've got the Cygnus region hugging the, the, the horizon. And I just love the color harmony in this image. You know, you've got these really cool blue tones because I bet it was pretty damn cold up there. But then you've just got this warmth of the orange light and just the way he's casually sitting there and just taking it all in again just an image that i just really want to be that person i just wish that was me having that adventure and i just love the warmth that that light gives because even when you go up into these mountains and it's freezing and the wind is blowing when you're under the stars you just you just get this feeling of warmth and you know just gratefulness to be in that position so i really love this image go to his instagram page as well and check out the full sort of width crop um, because this has been cropped a little bit. But there's another image of Adams as well, which I considered for a prize, and it was this one, um, a bit of a telephoto shot of Orion rising above the Swiss Alps. I just find it, it's, it's not only difficult to do these kind of shots, to line up a, a telephoto shot with a landscape, but also to blend the image and make it look good. And for me, this is just, just spot on. It just blends really nicely, and you can see some great detail in the Orion complex, in Barnes Loop and the Witch Head Nebula. So yeah, two great images, but of course that was my winner. So I'll be in touch with all of the winners of this month's challenge to give you your prizes. This month, there's not gonna be any prizes, um, but I think let's go with Orion, especially since the whole Betelgeuse has, has changed. So you can't cheat now. I'll know if it's an old image because Betelgeuse is too bright. Um, but let's shoot Orion. Send in your pictures of Orion this month. And that is it, guys. I hope you all have an amazing New Year's celebration. Really looking forward to another year of astrophotography. And if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.